Hey everyone. So today we are going to look at Amazon Prime's big day deals. So I normally create website articles for these and I will have a website article as well, but I thought it might make sense to create a video and kind of talk through why I think some of these are good deals if you're potentially interested in anything. So we're gonna be focusing on a few different categories. So NAS devices, mini PCs, some networking deals. And the goal is just to highlight some of the better deals. Not everything is going to be an amazing deal, but I will talk through it as we go through it. So I don't wanna waste much time, let's get into it. So the first device up is actually an external hard drive. Now this is a Western Digital 20 terabyte external hard drive. If you have a NAS device and you're currently not backing it up, RAID is not a backup, you need to have a backup. With this device, what you can do is basically take the device right out of the box, it has a power cable, plug the power cable in, it has a USB cable, plug the USB cable into your NAS, and then you can actually back up your NAS directly to this. You'll get 20 terabytes of usable storage space, and overall this is a great local backup for basically anybody that owns a NAS device. So that's number one. Number two, these are actually white label Western Digital Red Drives. So what that means is that if you actually physically take this hard drive out of the enclosure, it is an internal SATA hard drive that is a NAS variant. So what people do is they actually purchase these when there's a great deal like this, they'll purchase these, and then they'll physically take them out of the enclosure and they'll use them as internal drives in a NAS device as well. Mainly because from a price to terabyte perspective, it's gonna be very hard to find this type of deal. So assuming you're willing to actually take the drive out of the enclosure, this is a great overall deal. So again, you can use this as a backup or you can use this as an internal NAS drive if you're willing to shuck it. There are tons of videos online that will show you how to do that. So the next up is actually a NAS device. Now this is a TerraMaster NAS device. There are a few TerraMaster NAS devices that are currently running uh, on sale right now, but this is the one that I would say is the best overall. So it's a four bay NAS device. It has an Intel i3 and 305 processor. I recently did a video on TerraMaster's F8 SSD Plus. This device has the exact same processor as it. The only difference is rather than being a flash NAS, it is actually a traditional NAS device. So what you get for that is an eight core processor. You get 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, as well as two, two and a half gigabit NICs. So from a physical NAS device, this is a great NAS device for the price. The problem is that people don't love the TOS operating system. I'm not the biggest fan of it as well, but TOS 6 has gotten better. If you wanna see anything on it, you can watch that video. The big thing here is that TerraMaster devices, because of that HDMI port right there, generally allow you to install third-party operating systems. So if you wanted to buy this device here and actually install Unraid or TrueNAS or even Open Media Vault, you can do that. And for the hardware, from a price perspective, it's gonna be very hard to build something like this for this price. When you take into consideration things like power draw, as well as the actual power of the NAS, as well as the memory, et cetera. So from a overall NAS device perspective, this is a great deal with the disclaimer that TOS 6, might not necessarily be something you're looking for from an out of the box solution, but overall from a price to performance perspective, this is a great overall device. Next up is actually a mini PC. So I have three of these. I've done two videos on it. I installed Jellyfin on it, which uses uh, QuickSync because it is an Intel processor. That's number one. Number two, I went through and I actually installed a Docker uh, container, it's a Linux container, but the idea is that I use this device as a mini home server. The benefits of it is it has an Intel N100 processor, which from a price to performance perspective is really, really good. That's number one. Number two, because it's an Intel processor, again, it has Intel QuickSync. So if you wanna do any hardware transcoding, you can do that. Number three is that it can actually be upgraded. So this device comes with eight gigabytes of memory, but you can upgrade it to 32 gigabytes if you would like. So you can actually use this as a virtualization tool if you did wanna install Proxmox and run this next to let's say like a NAS device or something, you can. And this would function as a mini home server that would run a bunch of different services for you from a very, very competitive price point. So overall, I really, really like this device. I am literally looking at one back there right now. Now, if you're somebody that wants a mini PC but doesn't actually want to upgrade the memory because that one only comes with eight gigabytes of memory, you can go down this route as well. I do not own this device, but it's the same idea. It's an N100 processor. The difference is rather than having a 250 gigabyte 
SSD, it has a 500. And rather than having eight gigabytes of memory, it has 16. And then finally, this isn't nearly as good of a deal. I probably wouldn't purchase this one, but I wanted to show it regardless. This is the same device that I have, the Nuckbox G3. The only difference is that it has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory and a one terabyte NVMe SSD. So again, wouldn't necessarily buy this one. I'd probably buy the cheaper one and then just upgrade it. But if you're somebody that just wants to buy something and just set it up, this is a great option as well, though I'd probably stick with the B-Link if you definitely want to go down this path. Next up is actually an unmanaged switch. So with the 20% coupon, this comes down to under $45. With that, you basically get a two and a half gigabit switch, but you also get one 10 gigabit SFP plus port, which you can use for various things, assuming you have something at your house that actually needs that. So not the most known name, and I don't and have not ever used this device. I'm purely looking at this from an if I would buy this device perspective, but it's gonna be very hard to find a device like this, especially at this price, that does have that 10 gigabit port and does have eight two and a half gigabit ports as well. And the best part about it is that moving forward, it seems the industry has decided that two and a half gigabit is the future. So for a while it was one gigabit, now it's two and a half gigabit. If you don't currently have any networking equipment that's two and a half gigabit, this is a great place to start. And then you could eventually upgrade if you ever needed to. But overall, really like this device for the price. Now this is not nearly as good of a deal, but I wanted to highlight it because some people would see the name potentially of that other one and not really be in love with it. But a TP-Link five port, two and a half gigabit switch for 70 bucks isn't that that bad. It's not a screaming deal. I wouldn't necessarily rush out to buy it. But if you're somebody that needs a two and a half gigabit switch, it's not the worst deal, but again, I probably wouldn't buy this. I'd actually probably buy Unify's Flex Mini 2.5G, which just came out like last week uh, for 50 bucks. You basically get the exact same thing, but it's managed. So again, not gonna be the best deal, but in very, very specific cases where somebody needs this today and wants a known name, it's not the absolute worst. So in line with that two and a half gigabit switch, if you are using any devices that currently only have one gig networking, you can purchase a device like this for 20 bucks and you would be able to add two and a half gigabit networking to basically any of those devices. What I like about this one is it's USB-A and USB-C. So it should work on just about any device that you have. This Ugreen device is basically the exact same thing. The only difference that I will point out is that this is USB-A. So I'd probably buy the other one so that you have USB-A and USB-C, but if you know for a fact you only need USB-A, Ugreen is kind of known in this space. So I would go with this name over the other name. However, the fact that the other one has a USB-C would kind of push me into that direction. Next up is an actual UPS device. So if you don't have a UPS, you kind of need one, especially if you have a NAS device. Now I have these basically everywhere. Every PC, I have one of these on. Every NAS device, I have one of these on. The idea behind it is that if you lose power, especially if you have a NAS device, RAID can potentially corrupt, assuming that a write operation is occurring at the same time as the power outage occurs. What this does is it allows you to actually safely power down the device. So these come with a way to actually monitor them. So there's basically a USB cable that you can plug into a NAS or you can plug into basically anything and you'll be able to actually monitor the UPS, which then allows you to shut down the device, assuming the UPS is on battery power. So from a price perspective, it's not the best deal, but it's not the worst deal either. Um, there are other devices that I would probably buy over this. There's a CyberPower one that is pure sine wave, which not to get too deep into it, is basically just a cleaner power source. Uh, but the problem is that's like 50 bucks more than that and it's not on sale today. So from a price to performance perspective, if you're somebody that needs a UPS, a 1500 VA will run a lot and it will allow you to safely power everything down. So overall, I'm a big fan of UPS devices, and for the price, this is really not that bad of a deal. So the final item on this list is actually going to be a travel router. Now, I've been in the market for one of these for a while, and I might actually buy this one right here today. What's nice about this is if you're somebody that travels a lot, what these allow you to do is these actually run OpenWRT. So OpenWRT is an open source router operating system. And what it allows you to do is basically configure everything you could possibly imagine in a little travel router. 
So when you go somewhere, you go to a hotel, you can actually connect this device over Wi-Fi to that device and then it will function as a repeater. So then it would push through your SSID rather than whatever the hotel SSID is. So all your devices can physically connect to this before you ever get anywhere. And then you can actually use this device in that hotel or really wherever you are and have a full blown travel router. So you'll have your own SSID, like I said, you can have your VPN and there's a bunch of different things you can do on this. There's a ton of videos on this that people have done. So if you're interested in actually seeing what this is, just type in GLINet into YouTube and there's gonna be a ton of different travel router videos on how you can configure it and how you can use it. But it's a pretty good deal if you're somebody that would actually benefit from having a travel router. So those are the deals that I consider to be kind of the best deals. There are certain areas where it might make sense to just wait for Black Friday. I was really hoping that there would be better NAS hard drive sales, but unfortunately there aren't. The best ones are from Western Digital and they're really not that good a deal. So I wouldn't go down that path. That Western Digital external hard drive is a very good deal, mainly because of the actual storage space, 20 terabytes for 260 bucks, whatever it was, is very good from a price to terabyte perspective. But overall, I'm hoping that some of these deals you could potentially find value in. Never really done videos like this, so if you do or don't wanna see these videos in the future, just leave it in the comments. But other than that, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time.